Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining me for this session of Straight Chef Deep. My name is May Mata Alia. I'm a New York-based wine educator, and today the focus of my discussion is to bring more attention to, and differentiation between the two village-level appellations of Petit Chablis and Chablis, and to clarify how they fit into the overall structure of the Bourgogne wine region appellation system. In our discussion, we're going to highlight some of the key differences between these two terroirs. So we're not talking only about soil, we're also talking about location, we're talking about altitude, we're talking about exposure. And to help better illuminate the discussion, we're going to taste two wines from the same producer, from the same vintage, to really clarify some of those stylistic differences and how they express themselves in the glass. And to help better understand these differences, we are joined by AJ Ojeda Pons. I will let AJ introduce himself in a minute, but before I do, I will say that in my opinion, these appellations do absolutely belong side by side on a wine list as they do offer two very different stylistic differences. And if anyone knows anything about building a wine list, especially a by the glass wine list, it would be AJ. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, AJ. Please take a moment and introduce yourself to us and our guests. Hi, May, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, lovely to be here. Uh, and uh, so my name is AJ Ojeda Pond. Uh, I am um, been working in the wine industry in New York City for uh, a little bit over 20 years now. Uh, I am currently uh, the director of operations here at the Temperance Wine Bar. So it's, it's, it's my wine bar where we carry over 100 wines by the glass. Uh, and previously, I worked as the beverage director at Mercado Little Spain with Chef Jose Andres. And then uh, before that, I was working as the wine director at uh, the Lambs Club with uh, Jeffrey Zakarian for about eight years. So, but now I'm just kind of doing what I love. It's like my dream come true to finally have like my own wine bar where I can actually showcase a lot of these wines. Um, that's quite the uh, wine background. All right, so let's dive in and let's talk a little bit about these two appellations. So I just wanted to take a bit of a step back to talk about the appellation structure in Bourgogne, right? So we have our three different um, appellation levels. We have our regional, we have our village, and within that we have our village premier crew, and then we have our grand crew. So today, when I'm talking about Chablis and Petit Chablis, the first thing I would love to clarify is that Petit Chablis does not sit below Chablis on the hierarchy pyramid. They actually are both village appellations, all right? So Petit Chablis and Chablis are both village appellations. What really differentiates those two appellations is the terroir, as I mentioned. And with that, when we talk about Chablis, and I think every wine student, some, one of the first fancy words you learn in wine class is Kimmeridgean soils. And I remember when I learned that, I was like, ooh, Kimmeridgean soils. Well, Kimmeridge are the soils that really define Chablis, right? What are they? They're, a com they're kind of a complex set of soils. They have alternating layers of limestone, clay, marl, calcareous marl, but most importantly, they contain a lot of small oyster shells. Um, and that's what a lot of people say really defines and, and character, uh, characterizes, oh, now I'm flubbing my word, characterizes the minerality of Chablis wines. The Chablis wine region is rather large, so you have a variety of orientations there. But generally, the Chablis wines are at sort of what we would call mid-level elevation. When it comes to Petit Chablis, we are on what we call slightly younger soils, but let me just quantify that for Chablis Kimmeridgean soils, we're talking about soils that are about 150 years old. And for the Portlandian soils of the Petit Chablis, we're talking about younger soils. They're about 130 million years old. So, you know, they're still pretty old, but they're a younger um, soil. They sit on top. So usually when you look at the appellation of Chablis and then you see the plateaus, on the plateaus is where you have those younger soils, the Portlandian soils, and these soils do not have those fossil, um, that presence of fossils. It's the more limestone soil. And also because you're on these plateaus, it's generally more windswept. Um, oftentimes you also might have a more Northern orientation. So what that all means is that the styles of the wines are really quite different. They tend to be a little bit more open, a little bit more accessible, a little bit more on the citrus um, notes, and maybe a little bit less on that sort of brooding minerality that you will get on the Chablis Appellation. So this is kind of really giving it a broad stroke, um, but 
I find it really interesting that oftentimes people do think of Petit Chablis as lesser than, even though, as I just mentioned, they sit on the same quality level. So AJ, I'm going to ask you this question, and this is just kind of your opinion on this because I know I have mine, but why do you think that is? Why do you think that so many people seem to think of Petit Chablis as kind of a lesser appellation than Chablis? Um, well, I would have to say that, um, you know, I think there's a little bit of confusion about that and it has been for quite some time and uh, maybe it goes back to the fact uh, that Burgundy has always followed this model of hierarchy, you know, where you kind of have like the village appellation, the premier crew and the grand crew appellation. So Petit Chablis kind of always gets uh, shadowed by the great grand crews of, of Chablis. Uh, but, uh, I, I feel like they don't get enough love because, you know, the, the, the winemaking and, and Burgundy is exactly the same, especially in Chablis, the winemaking is exactly the same. They just have a different style. Uh, and, uh, maybe there's another, um, factor, which is availability. You don't see them as much, uh, uh in, in market. So, um, but I think it's, it, it's just a matter of confusion. Maybe the word petite, uh, people, uh, as, uh, think that it's like something that's lesser, less concentration, less quality. Uh, when you think of like Chablis or Chablis Premier Cru, Chablis Grand Cru, that just, just means like greater. But actually, I think the wines actually offer an incredible amount of quality, just at a different level, a different style. Do you find that sometimes if you are looking for a Petit Chablis, do you have difficulty finding Petit Chablis from your suppliers? I think so. And I think perhaps it's uh, because of the fact that um, many importers might not want to bring them uh, and may want to just kind of like uh, 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 bring more wines that are more, uh, I guess, appealing to the consumer or something that are better known. Maybe it's the fear that uh, they won't be able to sell them. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, you, you don't see them as much. Uh, if you really dial it back to the fact that you're talking about a sense of place, right, an origin, and in the origin, you kind of just go back to the soil type. If you really kind of pinpoint that, you know, between Cameridian and Portlandian soil, then you kind of, you really should just be thinking about the origin of the place and not the, 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 quality, the quality level. In terms of production as well, you know, Chablis is 66% of what the produce, region is producing, whereas um, Petit Chablis is uh, about 18%. So there just is a lot more Chablis than there is Petit Chablis. And I think that also correlates to the availability of these wines. So, and if, you know, they're much more rare in a way, and you'd think that should give them a little bit more um, appeal because we like things that are rare in this kind of, in New York. So let's, shall we taste some wine? Absolutely, yeah, we should. <laughs> You know, it's funny because, you know, like we, we think of these things as being so homogenous, you know, like you think of like Chablis is homogenous with the soil, the Petit Chablis is homogenous, but like it, it, it's hardly ever like that. There's so many layers, like there's so many places that are, the, the layers of soils like combine within each other. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's hard to really like separate it into like one thing that is just so unique, you know. Yeah, I always say, you know, as, as a wine educator, our job is to sort of give these easy um, handles for people to remember. But, you know, even when we talk about the Camerigian soils of Chablis, I mean, it's not one uniform soil. You have some areas that have more clay, some that are more marl, some that have more, you know, more of the fossil presence, some that's more exposed. So, um, you know, so there's also a lot of diversity in that. So um, let me just show you the wines that we're tasting. So um, we're tasting... The Christophe et Fille, they're really lovely wines. We're starting with the Petit Chablis, um, and we are tasting both wines from the 2018 vintage. So the focus of this discussion is not really on vintage variation, but just to sort of contextualize, 2018 um, was a very, uh, I would say it was sort of the big relief vintage for the wine region, because um, 2016, was a vintage that had a lot of loss in volume. 17 was had its own challenges. And when it came to 18, it was really a vintage that really delivered both in terms of uh, quality and quantity. So it was kind of a big relief for a lot of the winemakers there that they finally had a year where they had both quality and quantity. They could take a bit of a breath. Um, so let's start by the uh, Petit Chablis. And um, so I'll, I'll just share my thoughts on the Petit Chablis, I was sort of found a lot of really pleasant citrus notes on it. Um, it's open, 
you know, I found that it, on the nose, it's quite open and there's a freshness to it. There's a vibrancy to it that I found very appealing. Yeah, indeed. Also, a lot of those sort of like fresh, uh, uh, crisp white fruits, um, as well as the citrus. Um, you know, the thing about uh, Petit Chablis and, uh, and Chablis, being both of them, they're like village appellations, right? You know, so with, with, uh, with Petit Chablis, you generally get more fruit. And I think that has to do with the Portlandian soils, right? They generally produce fruitier wine. So you won't have as much of that sort of like salty, minerality that you get with uh, Premier Cruz and Grand Cruz, but they still do get a stony minerality here, right? You know, you get this citrus and white fruits and touch of floral, but this sort of like licking rock uh, minerality in, 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 in as a backbone. So much minerality, right? It's like um, it's like a piece of uh, lime for me on the back of my palate. It's really crisp. It's really fresh. It's really juicy. It doesn't have that salt, just to your point, it doesn't have the sort of like saltiness that I, I, I tend to get a lot on Chablis, um, but it's incredibly juicy and, and mouthwatering um, and lovely. I mean, I think. So I want to compare- The, the acid, the acid, acid, acid structure, you forget about this. Like, you know, like the acid is just so great with these wines too. The acid is fantastic. And that's what's really, it's just my mouth is just like this gushing of, of saliva going on there. All right, so you know what? Maybe before we move on, um, Food. I know you've got, you've got, I mean, you've got such a tremendous background in food. I, I love that you also worked at Mercado. Um, you know, you at Lamp, uh, you were at the Lampa, which was like maybe more meat centric. And then you were at Mercado was all this beautiful tapas. And now you're here, you know, at Temperance. So um, what would you pair this Petit Chablis with just kind of off the top of your head? Well, um, there are so many like choices that I think that can pair with this wine uh, and with Petit Chablis in general. Uh, and I think the range is quite wide because you could be having something like uh, fried calamari uh, or you can be having a crudo with uh, a hot chili sauce or uh, something more vegetal like a crudite platter with green goddess dressing or a um, simple fish just fancier with some gremolata or some uh, salsa verde and even uh, just a chicken with like some lemon zest and, and, and herbs. So I think there's there's a wide range of uh, dishes that you can actually pair with a wine like this. All right, let's taste the Chablis now. Because uh, I've been talking about the Petit Chablis and I, you know, I love it. And I think, again, you know, my case is always like, I think it's a great by the glass wine. Um, and I think you, you kind of gave us a lot of ideas why that may hold too. But let's taste it against the Chablis. So this again is the same producer, Sir Christophe Effie, same vintage, um, but this is from Chablis and it's a Vieille Vigne. So, um, just to also give a little bit of context, the first wine, the vineyards were, I think the vines were about 15 years old. Now we're talking about old vines, so Vievin meaning old vine, um, and here the, wine, the vines are about 60 years old plus. So, um, you know, you expect a little bit more intensity from wines that are coming from older vineyards, and that's also why they oftentimes will go through the trouble of letting you know that on the front label. Um, so to me on the nose, there's already a big distinction between the two. I mean, where, whereas I sort of feel like the Petit Chablis comes at me, this one is forcing me in. It's really making me have to work a little bit harder to extract some of the aromas. I'm not getting the same kind of, you know, citrus exuberant citrus that's popping out at me with those kind of like stone fruit and white flowers. What do you think of the nose difference here, AJ? I, I feel like the fruit here is a little riper. Maybe there's a touch more of uh, uh, of yellow fruit here, like um, white peach or a ripe peach. They're very fresh, um, and and also the 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 character of like white fruit. When I think of like a uh, uh, green apple, I think this is more kind of like golden, delicious apple, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was. I also tend to think a lot in terms of apples when it comes to uh, to Chablis. And I was like, first one was sort of a very crunchy Granny Smith for me, and this is definitely more on the golden delicious. There is more ripeness on this wine. There's more concentration and intensity on this wine. Um, there's a more sort of a saline finish for me. Um, but it's but it's it's a quite a it's a quite a big wine in the sense of its concentration. It's not a big voluminous wine, but there's a lot of concentration going on in this wine, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I think this is actually what like actually can uh, show you how the transition between Portlandian and Kimmy region soil can be seen, right? Because like this is it's, it's different exposure, different uh, altitude, different um, yeah. So like you 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 can actually see how the the, the Chardonnay can change in, uh, in 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 character from being in this sort of like plateau going to this sort of like more southern exposure area. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are more Kimmy region uh, lays. You know, when we talk a lot about Chardonnay being a grape variety that is a mirror of its terroir. Um, and oftentimes that that mirror is obliterated by a lot of winemaking, I find. Um, but Chab what I've always loved about Chablis is it's an area where you really get to hone in on Chardonnay in its purity without the heavy hand of winemaking. It doesn't mean there's not winemaking, there's always winemaking, right? I mean, whenever you're making wine, there's some level of winemaking and decisions that go into it. But you, this isn't an area where you've got all the oak and all this other stuff that's kind of covering. So you're really getting the purity of this expression of the grape in these two very different terroirs. Um, so, you know, the Petit Chablis sort of, it's more open. Um, it's a little bit more forward beautiful acidity um you know and to me structurally that acidity is really what's kind of defining that wine uh when it comes to chablis it is it is richer you're getting you know you're slightly lower elevation you it you do feel more intensity you do feel more ripeness as you said i love your analogy sort of going from a greener apple to more golden delicious more golden fruit um it's a big wine. i mean this is a wine that i also would would keep for a few years you know i mean we oftentimes kind of talk about these wines as you know drink young drink now but i do to my mind especially the chablis um it could it could wait a few years what do you do you have any thoughts on that actually yeah no of course i mean obviously with with this amount of acid uh the acid can definitely carry this wine through for a couple more years for a few years actually um and i think also that helps it I think of like, when I think of like comparing these wines to, let's say, the ones from the Cote d'Or, which kind of have that excess puppy fat, right? You know, that uh, with, with all that richness, right? Uh, with this wine, uh, a little bit leaner. So, like, I feel like they can actually go further on a straight line. Yeah. Yeah. There's that linearity of the acidity in Chablis that is always this kind of beautiful. Um, ten there's a tension to the wines. I always kind of come back to the same word tension when I'm talking about Chablis. Um, because there's even when even in riper years, um, that acidity is always there and it always anchors the wines. Okay, food thoughts on this wine. You know, I was going to ask you that question. So we talked about a lot of potential for the Petit Chablis. So what would you do with this wine? So with this wine, I probably would go for a little bit of like heftier dishes, right? And you can still actually pair it with mm, oysters and crudos and uh, and raw dishes for sure, definitely there. There's that character where there they will not overpower the wines would actually like uh, complement each other. But I, I think I want to see more more fried uh, uh, food, like more strong flavors, like uh, more savory herbs. Um, and I also uh, even um, um, uh, veal and duck. Uh, it's crazy how you know you may think that it's only available for red wines, but it's actually like with a Chablis like that, you're just having like a pan seared duck with butter and uh, thyme, like would pair so nicely with it too. You know, it would just cut through the fat and uh, and, and it would pair very, very well. Same thing with like uh, um, uh, schnitzel. I mean, have you ever had schnitzel and Chablis? That's such a great pairing, right? You get that, that breaded, fried cutlet with the lemon and it's just such an incredible pairing with, uh, with Chablis. I love that idea, the schnitzel. See, what I what I really like is, you know, I I feel like, you know, yes, oysters. I mean, we love oysters, but I don't know about you. I'm not sitting at home like shucking oysters every night, you know. Um, but I am more likely to have fish, or I am more likely to have, um, you know, some chicken. I am more likely to have some schnitzel actually, or or pan uh, veal. So those are dishes that I'm more likely to have at home. And um, yeah, I think those, you know, and I and I wish I was having oysters every night, but that's not my reality. <laughs> Well, this was great. Thank you so, so, so much. 
Um, so any final, um, any final parting thoughts for us? You want to just, um, can you just remind us of the name of your fab? So are you in your bar right now? Is that what I'm seeing behind you? Uh, yeah, yes, I am right, right behind me. So with this, you know, I feel like I'm in a, in a box of the 1980s, 1970s, the old New York. Right. So my wine bar is called Temperance. Temperance is on uh, 40 Carmine Street here in the West Village. And uh, yeah, final thoughts. I said, you know, like don't uh, I? I love to shine a light on wines that don't get the love in general. So, uh, and this is a place where I like to do it. You know, so like my my list is less about the mainstream, less about the the, the all the you know great variety. So you know, but also just these wine regions that offer an incredible amount of quality, an incredible amount of like. Uh, uh, taste and a flavor and a versatility so and everything is by the grass so you know i just just come down sometime and uh play I mean, around we have a many small plates and that was kind of like the idea so that like one wine can pair with like 15 20 dishes the same thing you know you get this petit chablis here and there's like six seven eight dishes that you can pair with and you can get the chablis here and you can do the same thing i love it I love it. Thank you so, so much. I, I will be down to Temperance as soon as I can uh, easily get down there. I'm going to look for that on your list. Um, and I really appreciated your time and your thoughts and your uh, availability. And thank you so much, AJ. Yeah, thank you. Really, thank you for having me. All right.